Hey, this is Nelson. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have the ultimate list of accessories for the Hemingway Cruiser. I have put together a huge compilation of accessories that you're not going to want to miss, so stay tuned for that. Not to mention, near the end of the video, I'm going to have a giveaway to one lucky person who winds up liking the video, leaving a comment, and also subscribing. So stay tuned for that near the end of the video. So without further ado, let's get to the accessories. All right, so one of the first accessories I wanted to go over with you is the Tannis Armor inserts. Now, the Tannis Armor inserts, obviously you can't see them because they are actually inside the tire. They are just above the, the inner tube and below the, the inner tire. So it protects the inner tube from punctures that come from outside the tire. Now, this is the, the wrapper they come in. This is the wrapper it comes in. And they're approximately the about I say about that thick. Pull this the side liner in. So you're looking at right about that much. It's about that thick. So you, they provide a, a lot of cushion and protection from projectiles. Now, tennis answers do a few things. One, obviously to protect from punctures, but also it gives you a bit of uh uh, absorption when you're hitting bumps or hitting potholes or whatever it takes and absorbs a lot of that shock so it gives you a much smoother ride and also it provides you an opportunity to ride home even on a flat because it does give you a bit of thickness all around your tire it's going to protect your tire if you're going to ride home on the flat from damage to your rim and your valve so you can actually ride it home while the tire is flat with the tennis inserts. Next is the skid plate that I installed uh, which you can get on eBay. I'll leave a link to that as well. Now this is made to protect your controller. The wires are down there because they're kind of exposed underneath and also your cadence sensor. Uh, I went ahead and I spray painted this is all black because it was kind of a chrome piece right there and I just wanted to keep the, the all black look. But uh, this is definitely a nice item. It does have a little Hemingway branding on the front face of it. And if you guys are curious what type of paint that I use, I use this uh, Krylon uh, flat black paint. Uh, really nice, goes on smooth. It's The color matches great on the frame if you have any any scrapes or anything that you want to, you know, color match, uh, that sp spray paint will work just fine. Also, another thing, too, that you can use, and I find very helpful, is just simple old electrical tape. Black electrical tape works really well with tying down certain wires instead of using, you know, cable ties everywhere. This is a, a nice, clean tape. Uh, duct tape obviously leaves a lot of residue, but if you have a roll of uh, electrical tape, this comes in handy too. So definitely get yourself a roll of that. And next, this might be a little hard to see, but I have at the very end of this this crank, I have what they call a crank protector or crank defender uh, is the, the brand. And that just, it's a rubber end piece that that goes right over the end of this, the crank, and it has a hole where you can still, you know, put in your pedal, but it protects your your crank from possibly hitting curbs or rocks or whatnot, so you don't damage or, or break the crank at all. So, again, this will be in the description as well. Then, when it comes to securing your bike, I went ahead and got this lock right here. It secures with two Velcro straps in the back, and it's kind of rubberized on the other side, so it stays solid and prevents it from sliding up and down so much. Right here is a little quick release. As you pull down, push it down, you can slide out the, uh, the lock. And it looks just like this. Made by West Biking. And I have the key attached to the keychain. Here's the, the key for the battery and here is the, the key for the lock. And it just goes right in there to release it. The key stays in, doesn't come out. And you just unwind it. 
And as you can see, it is a lot longer than it appears, especially while it's rolled up into the thing. So you would just wrap it around the bike and then wrap it around whatever secure post that you have in that area. And then it just rolls right back up. We're gonna go the other way. And then put it right back into its spot. And it snaps right in, just keeps it from coming out. And that is one of the uh, bike locks that I have. I also have a cable one, I think, which I think everyone is familiar with the, the combination cable locks. And next is the Cloud9 seat saddle. Um, this seat is... Uh, is I think it was around 40 50 bucks uh, there are many different models of cloud nine seats uh, I went ahead and it's, it's hard to see but I'm gonna take this off I got the one that has the ventilation and the little opening right there that, that relieves a lot of the, the pressure on the tailbone so I get you close up with the material. And of course it does come with the little suspension springs in the back. Now they do make other models that don't have as big of suspension springs. They're about half and they're covered or covered or coated in a rubber or plastic covering. Uh, and one of the reasons why I might actually upgrade to a different seat uh, although I do like this seat, the springs I've noticed tend to, I'm going to show you when I put this back in. <clears throat> Depending on how high you have the seat or how low, uh, the bolts tend to hit the, the frame. And this is basically this is the rack actually, but uh, it does tend to hit and chip the paint a little bit. So if, if you have it too low, you might risk the seat going down, but if you have it a little higher, you should be okay. Otherwise, I suggest getting a, one of the other you know, Cloud9 seats that have the smaller springs that are covered in the plastic or rubber coating to prevent any type of little chips on the, on the paint. Now in comparison, this is the, uh, the stocks the stock saddle, this is the seat that comes with the Hemiway. Uh, it does have a nice little handle grip to maneuver your bike because these bikes are heavy. So it gives you a little opportunity to grab it and uh, move it around. Now let's do a little size comparison with the, uh, the seat. It's really not much wider. So maybe looks like an inch and a half maybe wider and it's really about the same size just not as thick obviously the, the cloud nine is thicker by a lot and these seats really aren't that bad they do have kind of a, a gel feel to it but uh, if you go with the cloud nine if you uh, are shorter and you and you know you're going to have your bike seat down like i said uh, you might want to go with a different seat instead of the ones with the long springs because you'll have your seat lower and you risk chipping the paint and uh, that is the cloud nine all right so when it comes to bags i've reviewed a few rear rack bags like rock brothers and a couple of other brands um this is one by Engway, and this is very similar to the Rock Brothers in almost every way. There's very small, you know, exceptions, details, um, like the side stripes, the uh, how it's, it kind of sticks out. Um, the rear pocket, even though the, the Rock Brothers does have a rear pocket, 
it's not as big as this. So this holds a lot more and it comes with a, a mesh lid, you know, where you can actually secure stuff. You can put your wallet or keys back here and zip it up to keep it from falling out. Uh, the Rock Brothers bag doesn't have that. It's all open on the top. Of course, it comes with, you know, once you open it up, it's got a divider inside, Velcro dividers on the inside to kind of separate different things you might load into your bag. And it is waterproof. You might notice the zippers are really, really tight and secure to keep, keep water out. And the material is of a hard carbon fiber look to it. So it's a hard shell and not a cloth material, which is really nice. And just like the Rock Brothers bag, when you look uh, on either side, you have these large compartments. When you unzip it, and I'll do that right now, opening it up, you have these side paneer bags that fold down to which you can store extra material. So it comes with a little bungee tie down right here, a little bungee tie down to where you can, you know, you can't really see it there, but, you know, tie it around there. And like I, like I said, this is both sides. So you can have your top bag for loading, and you can have a side, you know, a side bag on each side, by the way. Both sides will will fold down just like that to store extra stuff. So really nice on the endway bag, just like the Rock Brothers bag. The endway bag is gonna be about twenty to thirty dollars cheaper than the Rock Brothers. And like I said, it's practically the same bag, it's almost identical. So Let's get this zipped up. Next, I have actually swapped out the mechanical disc brakes for the Juntec M1 hydraulic caliper brakes. Now, this is branded Bolton. Uh, Bolton uh, bikes, they, they use the same Juntec and they just brand their name on, on the, the caliper. And I went with Bolton because they sell it a few dollars cheaper and they don't include a the rotor, the disc at all, because you buy it online, they, they will give you two of the discs along with the caliper, and it's a few dollars more. And since I didn't really need these, I decided, well, it's okay, I'll, I'll pay the cheaper price and just get just the calipers. Again, that's both front and rear calipers, which are hydraulic instead of the mechanical disc brakes. And there's also an install video I did when I put these uh, hydraulic brakes on there. Check that out. That link will be in, in the description as well for the installation of the hydraulic calipers. All right, and then up on the handlebars, I have uh, grips, which I replaced the stock grips, which were the leather wrapped grips. As you can see, these don't have holes at the ends. I hear Hemiway is actually sending bikes out now with the holes so that you can add end mirrors and other accessories. So that's great. So you guys won't have to, you know, try to cut out the holes at the ends because there is a rubber piece underneath this leather and that is really difficult to cut. I, I know because I've, I've cut a couple of them in the past adding accessories. But this I took off and replaced with this nice rubber grip that has uh, little clamps on each end. It's just underneath here. You can't really see it, but maybe you can see it better on this end right here. It's got clamps on either end. The clamps uh, keep it, keep the grip from, from twisting. Uh, these tend to twist after, after amount of time or even right away. If, you, if you're someone who leans forward a lot and puts a lot of weight on this, on, on this little end right here where your palm usually goes, it does tend to turn. So I got these and, and these have worked great and haven't moved since. So I would definitely suggest getting these if you're trying to prevent the grips from, from twisting. And then to the, to the right, this is for my turning signal and brake light in the back, which I'll, I'll go over in a second. And then here we have the rear camera. Just turn that on. There you go. It's got a little bit of a glare, but so you can see it 
and showing you exactly what's in be what's behind. And that is right here. The camera, I'm going to show you exactly how that's installed in a second, but here's the brake light and the turning signal. So if I were to turn the brake light on, just press it and you can see the blue light. So your, your light is on. If I wanted to turn left, I just hit the, the left button and it will blink left. If I wanted to turn right, just hit the right button and it will blink right. You can also have emergency flashers by hitting the, the big button one more time. That's not it yet, but let me hit it. There we go. Kind of have a bit of a strobe effect. Well, I'm going to show you how that's installed later. And on the other side of the handlebars, once again, uh, that rubber grip with the clamps on the side. I swapped out the, uh, the half twist throttle for a thumb throttle. Uh, I thought that uh, it'd be safer for me. Um, plus it gives me more of a, a, a grip. I do have bigger hands and I don't like, I don't like trusting a lot, half of my grip on the twist throttle if I don't need it. So just having it out of the way and uh, with a thumb throttle that is basically when I want it, I can call on it at any time instead of accidentally twisting the throttle. And right next to the, the throttle, <laughs> I installed, I don't know if you can see this, it's hard to see, but it just clips on this little compass. It just clips on right around the handlebar. And you can really put this on anything, you know, if, like any other place, but I just put it right here. And you do have to keep it level, obviously. So I got that. And you can see the, the camera mount, but I'm gonna go over that when I go over the, how I wired all the camera equipment to the, the monitor. Uh, let's go down to the bag, which is in the top bar, this Rock Brothers bag. Now this Rock Brothers bag is, is uh, also with that carbon fiber style look to it, hard shell, much like the, uh, the Angway and the Rock Brother bags that I've discussed before. So it, it matches quite nicely. Uh, it does have a bit of a hood to keep any glare out. You would slide your phone right in between the neoprene sleeve that's on the upper right here. You slide it in between and you actually can press your touchpad on your phone just fine. It doesn't uh, prohibit you from using your phone at all. It does have a port underneath here if you wanted to put earbuds or anything else. I'm right now using it as a battery. There's a little battery pack right here for the additional headlight that I put on, uh, which I will go over that in a second. But again, waterproof bag, just, just like the rear rack bag and it straps here and here which some people like to strap it underneath the the, the 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 angle right here really it's it's best to go underneath the whole thing because you still don't want any slide and it also velcros around the stem riser right around here now there are multiple bags that you could put up there there's another one also by by rock brothers this one actually sits down lower this one is above the bar a lot by a lot nothing on the side this one as you can see rests right on the bar and it has a lower profile but same same uh same type of concept where you have the phone which goes inside it's covered you get a little hood to protect the glare but you have these side pockets that you can store items in just like you can store items in the whole main compartment right here. Now, in the Rock Brothers bag, you can uh, fit things, Let me open this back up again. There are side pockets on each side and you have the middle compartment and you have side pockets. 
And you know, I have you know tire levers if you have a flat tire and need to change anything. You know, tire repair kit, a little patch kit, uh, stuff like that. Again, Rock Brothers is a great uh, great company, especially for accessories when it comes to e-bikes. All right, and another accessory that that is probably something you notice right away are the two water bottle holders on the side of the front here. Now, you could put two water bottles. I have a Bluetooth speaker and I have a water bottle on each side. But your Hemingway comes with four holes, screws, to mount front basket on or maybe some other accessories. Uh, this is a, as a bracket that, that utilizes those holes so where you could screw in your, your bottle holders. Now, like I said, I'd put in the speaker on that side, but these brackets um, are probably about 35, 40 bucks. Uh, I think it's a great accessory because if, if you've been looking for a place to mount water bottles, you can see there's, there's not a lot of real estate uh, and you really don't want to start drilling holes into the frame yourself. So this bracket is really a godsend. Uh, check out the link. Um, get yourself one of these if you're looking for a place to put water bottles or even do something like this where you, know, you could put the Bluetooth speaker. You know, um, also this Bluetooth speaker, uh, I'll have a link as well in the description. Works really, really well. Fits right in the bottle holder just fine. No problem whatsoever. It's, it's nice and snug. It's not going to fall out. Now, this is only possible. <coughs> this is only possible uh, with that setup because I have also risen the handlebars up by using an adjustable stem. Now, when you first get your Hemingway, your Hemingway comes with a fixed stem that sticks out like right about the top of here and it goes over a little bit. And as you can see, if that was the case, you're gonna have a hard time lifting your water bottle out because it's gonna hit the handlebars. Uh, now, you could, you know, defeat that by getting a much smaller water bottle, which is very possible. Um, but an adjustable stem I have on here, and I really, really like this stem, this brand that's hard to see, but Satori, um, I like it because it came with, you know, black screws, you know, it matched the, the black theme really, really well, and it's nice and clean, you know, the way, the way they have, you know, the coverings and whatnot, it was a really clean install, looks nice check them out uh, but it's nice to have the handlebars up and more toward me so that I could sit up upright and not have any you know back pain for riding for a long period of time also the next thing is you might see that I have a handlebar extension which is this little piece right here now I I had originally used this you know, which would just screw in, not screw in, but screw over the handlebars, right, you know, right on either side of the the controller, not the controller, but the uh, LCD display. So it would go over there and right over there. But I noticed, I noticed it, it, it wasn't, no matter how much I tightened the screws, it was still, it was still loose. Things would still slide um, with, with enough pressure and, and time. So I went ahead and I found this item right here, which screws in to the bracket, which clamps down on your handlebars. So they actually give you longer screws and whatnot, so it you know stays in there nice and tight. Now this sucker doesn't move at all. It's 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 on there good, no twisting, no turning, and then now you can you know mount your accessories on here. The two accessories I have on here. Are, is the mounting clamp for the, the, this is actually a phone holder. And I went with this one because it was wide enough. Uh, this is not the, the LCD display for the camera, the rear view camera, uh, didn't come with this phone holder clamp. 
I bought this separate. I'll have that in the description as well. But this was big enough to, to see how you can tell that screw. You can open it just wide enough to actually hold the display. And when you tighten it down, it really holds it nice and tight. It's not, it's not going to fall and all that stuff. And then uh, it also holds uh, this extra light that I have. Uh, this, this light is about 1,000 lumens. Now, there's nothing tremendously wrong with the stock Hemingway light. The light works just fine. But if you want something with a, a bit more power that really lights up the way, I found this to be a great light. Plus, it's not one of those long ones that would protrude back here and, and prevent any mounting issues with other stuff you know, behind there. So this actually works really, really well. Now, the thing is, there's no, there's no, uh, you don't put batteries in this. This is so powerful that it requires its own battery pack. And if you follow the wire, the cable to it right here, I have it going right, tucked right behind the bracket, the bottle holder bracket. And I have it coming through the strap here and then through the strap here and then right through that port where the battery pack is right here because it requires a lot, a lot of juice, a lot of energy to provide such a bright light. And actually, let's let's test out the light. Let's test out the difference between the two lights. All right. So first, we're going to start with the Hemingway light. Not bad. See, it does a pretty good job. Uh, nice circle. Uh, everything's even. Uh, now we're going to do the 1000 lumen light. A lot brighter, a lot wider. And the 1000 lumen light also has strobe effect and different settings. All right, so another really cool feature that this bike has is the alarm that I installed. Now, it's a very simple alarm. Uh, it is loud enough to, to hear uh, at a pretty good distance. Um, it comes with a key fob even. A little key fob. Come on, focus on the key fob. There we go. Very basic, you know, a few buttons. Um, at the very top, Right now the bike is, is unarmed. If you want to arm it, you just press and hold this. Wait a few seconds. It's giving you a few seconds to walk away. That one tone right there was basically, it's saying, okay, I'm set now. So once you, lock, once you arm it, it gives you a few seconds to, to you know walk away from it so you don't accidentally bump it. Now if you were to just accidentally just, just touch a little bit, that's a warning. It'll give that person a warning. And that'll probably be like, okay, what was that? Someone who, who just touched the bike or just moved a little bit, like, okay, what was that? If they continue, sorry, it probably reset to the warning. But there, there is the actual alarm. And to shut it off, you just hit the disarm. Now, of course, you have a panic button. Uh, what now? You can also change the the sensitivity uh, settings to it, to where uh, you might have to move the bike a little, a little harder, or adjust the setting to where it's not so much movement whatsoever. Keep in mind, if you know if you're riding your bike in a city, you know cars that you know trucks that ride down the street, you know could shake the bike a little bit. You don't want the alarm going off every time a truck rolling down the street goes by. So you kind of have to adjust the settings that you think uh, would work for you, especially in the, in the environment that you might be in. But the alarm, uh, I have hidden the actual device, which really isn't any much bigger than the actual key fob itself. It is actually underneath the, the bike rack. I'm going to show you uh, what's all underneath there because there's some other things I want to show you as well. We'll go ahead and explain that in a bit. Some of you are wondering... Uh, about my camera setup, um, basically you just, you just turn it off, 
Turn it on. There's a button in the back. Let's see, come back on in a second here. Buttons. You can see them. Some of them have night vision. Uh, if you're riding at night, although you you know a night vision mode would definitely any any type of headlights would uh, you know brighten up the screen a bit too much. It might whitewash the screen, but you would be able to see you know in in low light conditions a, a lot better than you would anything else so that's always a plus but everyone wants to know pretty much how it's wired and where you know where it's connected and stuff like that and uh, I'm gonna show you plugs into the side right here and it's through the, the bar up front here and then I've included it right down through here and then this behind that strap, behind that strap, behind that strap. And then I actually have, I know it's hard to tell because it has black electrical tape. That's how well the black electrical tape blends in. But the black electrical tape is holding it there. And then it skips. It doesn't skip actually. I thought that was I thought that was the other wire skipping. I mean this wire skipping. But no, it's it's right underneath here. And then it comes right here. This is also uh, black tape as well, electrical tape. And, and also some more tape right there. Now to show you the rest, because um, I know you guys wanted to, to know about this as well, how this is wired, because I mentioned I was going to show you how I got this as well. So I'm going to show you all three of those things, the camera, the turning signal, and the alarm. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to pop the hood if you will, I'm just gonna take the seat off. And what I mean by pop the hood, it kind of looks like you're raising the hood on a car here. So um, I've already went ahead and taken the, the little screws out of here, one on this end and one on the other end, and I've kept them up here, okay? So you got the, the two points that the, the rack is on, here and here. Keep the screws on the top, take the screws off the bottom, and then you can do this. Just kind of raise the hood once you move the seat out of the way. All right, so let's go check underneath the hood. What do we have? We have the alarm that I was talking about. You can see that it's not that big. This is where the sound comes out. Uh, I have it, you know, strapped down with some 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 ties but you may not need that it, it, i do also have it on with uh the double-sided sticky tape it, it gives you i do have that on there but i didn't want it to fall off just in case you know i don't know if certain weather conditions might you know make it you know less sticky so i decided to tie this down with some cable ties as well and then when you look up here, I have the two components. I have the, the brake light and turning signal, and I have the camera set up. Now this is uh, the mounting hardware that came with the camera. And it, you might need, if you're, if you're gonna do what I did, I mean, you, you can definitely rig it, you know, many different ways if you have other ways that, or ideas to do it. Um, I just found that this was, you know, totally acceptable if I had to use you know, a spacer in between there because uh, these bars are a little thinner, so I had to add a little bit of thickness to it. But uh, the camera is is level, and as you see when it when it comes down, it looks like that in the center. It gives you a a full wide view of what's coming up from behind. So that's what it looks like underneath here. Of course, you got the bag straps and then how it's wired. Now, it was really easy to take off the stock uh, tail light. It's just a piece that plugs in your positive and negative, just plugs right in there. Just, you just kind of, you know, pull it out. 
Uh, of course, I saved it. I didn't throw it away. You know, I might want to change it out again someday. But this, you know, I definitely wanted a turning signal, and this works just as good. Now, what I, what I might wind up doing, uh, because this is also an option, I just have to buy a long uh, mini USB cable. This is activated by pressing an on and off button. Yeah, obviously it's not tied into the battery, but but you can actually do that. If you had a mini USB which plugs in here, because that, that's how you would charge the unit. So instead of me, you know, pulling the bike up to a charging port and then, you know, plugging a USB and, and, and charging it, I could, or you could, also run a, a, a mini USB cable and then run the wire. You know, we already have mini wires going through anyway. We could run the wire up to the charging port, which is, if you don't know, you have a, a USB charging port underneath, if you can see it right there, for USB underneath your display. So in essence, you could keep the turning signal charged and on the entire time, because when you turn on your bike, you turn the bike on, it sends power to the brake light. And if you keep it on, if you keep the, the, the on button on all the time, then whenever you power it up, it will keep the, you know, everything on. And then you just, you know, use it when you need it. Put the, you know, put the brake light on or, or use the turning signals. So really easy. Um, it just might, might need some creativity mounting the camera. There's, like I said, there's so many different ways to mount the camera. And uh, you can see it's, it's a lot of twisting and turning and getting it just just right so it, adjusting uh, you're going to be playing with for quite some time to get it just right but it works it works well uh i'm really happy with the camera i've had it on a, on a couple other bikes and uh i really enjoyed it it it, it gives you total visibility uh mirrors you know, are okay, but mirrors tend to shake a lot. They shake and sometimes they, sometimes you can't get mirrors to ex, to extend all the way past your arm. And well, it really depends on, you know, maybe how big of a person you might be too. I mean, if you're a big person, the mirrors may not go out far enough. And some people have trouble, you know, finding enough room for two mirrors. They might be able to, usually on the left side, and there's more, you know, real estate on the left side to only have one mirror and they have a hard time putting another mirror uh, on the other end. As you can see, when I, when I took out the half twist throttle, even with this full grip and the half twist throttle, I still have more room left over than I did if I had the half grip and the, uh, the half twist. So by installing the thumb throttle and this grip, I actually have a little room. I could, if I took, if I took this off right here, this little, <laughs> compass uh, I could put two mirrors obviously we all know we could put a mirror here and I could put a mirror right right here now because I got rid of that half twist throttle so that is part of the setup on how it's all wired to underneath the rack another accessory when it comes to safety especially is a helmet now in some states or areas local areas it may be required per law to have a helmet now these things you know don't have to be that expensive i believe this was like less than 15 dollars now i know it's not you know the most expensive one i'm sure there are some over a hundred but to be legal and just to you know give you a little peace of mind that might actually help you from an accident uh, a nice bike helmet this one is nice uh, as far as being black and, and, and matches the bike perfectly. If you're a Hemingway owner, this is perfect. And we have some other stuff in the bag. We have, we always keep this, you know, comes with the bike, of course, but we always keep the Hemingway charger in the bag just in case we're out and about and we're at a park or someplace we need to plug in. But you never want to forget your portable tire you know inflator or pump uh, of course you can have you know hand pumps or you can have this you know portable electric one i i love the electric ones it's a lot faster 
and uh, a lot easier, plus just less stress. You don't have to be bent on your knees or anything like that because you don't know if you're going to be on a on a rocky trail, you know, uh, or a flat or grass. You don't really know where you're going to be. So to be able to just, you know, plug it in and turn it on and just let it sit there while you stand up, walk around while you're waiting for the tire to to pump up is perfect instead of being on your knees uh, on the trail. So there it is, my Hemiway with all the accessories that I've put on, plus some, some that you don't see on here that I would also lid, list that uh, I've decided to take off and replace with something else that will also be in the description. But that is the Hemiway with all of the accessories that I have on there. Now, Hemiway is by no means a boring bike as it is, stock. But just the ability to personalize it and add things uh, especially with the you know the all black there's lots of black accessories and things you can also even paint and put on this you know the sky's the limit when it comes to Hemiway accessories so oh you know what I forgot the most important accessory I'm so sorry guys I I can't believe I missed this but uh, there's one more accessory that I forgot to mention we all know Hemiway is a beast of a bike pretty much a feat of engineering and like anyone who rides one of these knows you need a wingman at your side that's why I take goose goose is, is prepared for high winds and high velocity with his aviator glasses his helmet and his propellers <laughs> seriously guys this is a it, they have a whole bunch of these things, different types of helmets and and uh, and looks. Uh, I'm gonna leave uh, the link to this on the, in the description as well. This, like I said, there's so many different kinds. Obviously, it's just a little novelty gag, but these things do light up if you press the back of it. Oh, you gotta get it just right. There we go. You push down on it, it lights up. It flashes. See you coming down the road. Pretty fun. Anyway, check that out. Check out Goose. Goose is actually a duck. I think he suffers from identity crisis. All right, guys, this is Nelson. Thanks for watching. And uh, check out the, uh, the rest of this video, which is the giveaway. All right, so that was the accessories list. I, I hope you uh, liked the video with all the accessories and uh, maybe found something that you might uh, like for your bike as well. So so without further ado, let's get to the giveaway that we've all been waiting for. Uh, today's giveaway is going to be liners, puncture resistant liners for your fat tire. This is for a 26 by four fat tire bike, so it should work on your Hemiway just fine. Uh, this is about a retail value of $55. So you get two rolls, they're in there, one for each tire, okay? Now, like I said, this is the giveaway I'm doing for today. Uh, there'll be two more giveaways. I'll have a giveaway at 3,000 subscribers, and that'll be a, um, a, uh, a hitch carrier for two fat tire e-bikes. We put, you know, the back, you know, so you can carry it in the back of your, you know, hitch, you know, back of your vehicle. Uh, that is probably about a $200 value. Um, that will be at 3,000 subscribers. And then, when the channel gets to 5,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away an e-bike. Right, back, One of the e-bikes back there, I actually have probably a couple more. I don't know how long it's going to take to get to 5,000 subscribers, but um, if it takes a couple months, I might even have a couple more bikes you know, to choose from. And what we'll do is, what I'll do is, when I reach 5,000 subscribers, I'll put on, I'll, I'll put out one of those um, uh, voting, uh, voting polls, you know, which, which e-bike should go up for the giveaway. So that way it'll be up to the community to decide which bike, because I'm sure not everyone wants the same bike. But there's a, there's a, there's a lot to choose from, and all these bikes will, will be, you know, within the $1,600, $1,800 range. So, but that'll be at 5,000 subscribers. Now, there's three things you need to do to be entered in the giveaways. 
Now, today's giveaway is very simple, you know, definitely like the video, you know, that helps the algorithm anyway with, for YouTube. But uh, subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and then uh, you're halfway there. And the last thing is to subscribe to a friend's channel whose, whose link is below. It's, his channel is iStupidDC. And he's a he's a new YouTuber. Uh, he's going to be reviewing bikes, e-bikes, and accessories. So I want to give him a hand up and um, subscribe to his channel. So subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to his channel and then like the video. And you're already entered in to win this. Um, and then you're already halfway there to win either the trailer hitch, uh, the carrier hitch at 3,000 subs, and also the e-bike at 5,000 subs. Now. <clears throat> Now, I don't mind giving away an e-bike. I've just decided we're going to start doing some of these giveaways because I get bags, I get accessories sent to me, I get e-bikes sent to me for review. So, you know, a lot of this stuff just takes up room in the garage or, you know, in the closet. So, uh, doing a giveaway is, is a great way, I think, to, to give back, you know, that to kind of also help build the channel and, and uh, make it a bit more fun, you know. So, definitely uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to the uh, uh, my friend's channel, like the ch uh, like the like the like the video, and uh, be entered in to win this. And I would say maybe sometime next week, I'll do the the drawing and uh, announce the, the the winner on the Mr. Tuffy's liners. And this is Nelson. Thank you for watching the E Riders channel, and I'll catch you in the future video.